a really effective thing. So the project I'm going to talk about, which you may have heard about, is called the TIFF Illumination Project. So what is a TIFF? In short, a TIFF is when there are these conditions that mainly have to do with blight. And the government can come in and the government can say, we are calling this a TIF district. And everything in here, we're going to give uh, money to developers. And the way that we're going to take back, um, recoup the money, the investment, is we're going to freeze the property tax base. So let's say the first year of this in this district, everybody pays $100 in property taxes. The next year, let's say it goes up to $125. Well, what happens is $100 goes to public government services. That $25 goes into the TIF fund. And so, and this happens, uh, can happen for up to 23 years. And so that means people's property taxes are frozen as public needs continue to be um, needed. So um, in order to find out the data from this, I just learned another phrase the other day, the data had to be liberated. And I so very much wish that you had had your PDF hackathon when <laughs> this was going on, because all of the data about TIFs is not available. It's in um, PDF form. And so we had a bunch of volunteers. They kind of crowdsourced this spreadsheet. They crunched all these numbers together. And they had somebody who um, was a DataViz person. And they created this uh, poster, this pamphlet, to be distributed. Uh, this is one for the 27th Ward. And in the 27th Ward, um, in the last, what is that, eight years, um, TIFs have extracted from property taxes $255 uh, million. And it's not, so OK, where does that money go? Ostensibly, that's not terrible. Give money to develop things. As that area becomes developed, recoup costs, reinvest it and stuff. But that's actually not entirely what happens. Um, only 42% of things go to public goods. Um, and 46% go to private, 12% to nonprofit. And nonprofits are not always public, per se. So, um, so this also revealed, which was an unpublished number, it had never before apparently been uh, divulged, that so these TIF accounts, they're like bank accounts. And you can find out how much money is sitting in that account. And so it was found out that there was $1.7 billion left in these bank accounts for uh, last year. Now, the government says that this money has already been allocated. And I can't speak to whether or not that's true. However, it's disruptive to the narrative of the city that everything is broke. We have to close schools. Uh, a slice of $1.6 billion could be tremendously uh, important to uh, instead of closing schools, per se. So, But the tricky thing about this is that on people's property tax bills, it's not on the tax bill. And interestingly, it is on the tax bill, but where you put what, how much money was taken, it just says zero. So I don't know why you'd even put it on there in the first place, but it is on there. And so these figures for people's property tax bills, they're, they're not correct. They're, they're skewed because what they're doing is they're taking it based on percentages of the $125 that they gave. But in reality, only $100, only $100 in this metaphor, only $100 were, were actually, did they apply the public, you know, give out the funds formula to. So um, here you can see the TIFF Chicago um, Inglewood TIFF. There it is. There's a big zero. Um, so question here. Um, what do you think is the actual amount that the TIF takes out of a property tax in that district? Um, guesses real quick. That's right. <gasps> so that's pretty important to have on your property tax bill. So um, what they did is they put on this moveon.org petition. I don't think it was the petition necessarily that did it. But anyway, this kind of shows the narrative of it, I guess. Um, anyway, they put it on. They said, please put the tax increment financing on the property tax bills. And then what they did, and this is the part where it is the community organizing part, the getting it out there part, um, Tom went from ward to ward to ward to ward. They just did these town hall meetings over and over and over again. More town meetings. Keep doing town meetings, everybody, because we got you. It's the best. you got to come to these. There's just more. If you didn't miss that one, you can go to another one. People really like to go to the town meetings. And in the end, um, they, uh, they went to, in uh, the course of that time period, they went to they uh, did 16 illuminations and they went to 26 wards. They illuminated 152 tips and they engaged with 1,600 people. Um, and uh, the reason why uh, tips do not obey ward boundaries, they overlap. That's why there are 16 illuminations for 26 wards. And so, what do you know? Um, and this is probably actually this is also in part due to uh, David Orr, who I hear is a pretty stand-up guy. Um, all of a sudden now, they are going to put on the property tax bills, and that's going to be a really game-changing. Thing because when people now have the knowledge, 
that this is happening, then they can make an informed decision about whether or not that is something that they like happening. And I think in the OpenGov area, we can all agree this is a lot of what OpenGov um, is about. It's a slice of it, at least. So, um, wow, I 